Hello everyone, Code Together here again. My name is Rami and today we are going to talk about Java generics. Have you ever used list with angle brackets, string or map with angle brackets, integer string for example and wondered what those angle brackets really mean in Java? Well, that's Java generics. One of the most powerful tools in Java that makes you being able to write reusable, safer and flexible code inside Java. In this video, I'll teach you everything from why do we need to use Java generic, why, and to building your own Java generic methods and classes with real life examples. So let's dive in. So here is a list called names, but I didn't tell Java what type of data this this list should hold okay like i didn't specify here what what kind of data this list should hold that's called a row type okay now here's something that might confuse you like why do we need to cast over here like why do we need to cast at all why can java just know it's a string the answer is because java stores these items as as type object when you don't specify a type and that means you lose the original type information and the compiler can can be sure what's inside uh so when you call names.get0 for example here java thinks it's it's returning an object and you have to manually tell it hey it's actually a string uh, but that's risky so if you're wrong, you get a class cast exception at runtime. So the solution is generics. So we're simply going to add string here and this will, will solve it. By adding this string, I'm telling Java this list is for strings only. Now the compiler checks this for me. If I try to add an integer by mistake, it won't even compile. And when I call get zero, I already knows I'm getting a string. No casting, no risk. So generics help with two things. You have type safety. You catch errors at compile time instead of runtime. And you get a cleaner code. So no need for ugly casting. Okay, so let's see now how Java generics work. So here we have a simple generic class called box. The angle bracket T uh, syntax tells Java this class is generic. Uh, so it means it can work with any type. T stands for type and you can name it anything. T, U, K, uh, you choose. Inside I have a private field or attribute called value and its type is T. I've also created a setter method set that takes a T and a getter method that returns a T. And this class doesn't care if you store a string, an integer, or even a custom object. And that's the power of generics. Now let's see how can we use this box class. So now that we defined our generic class box angle brackets t, let's actually use it. Here in the main method, I'm creating uh, one box for string, as you can see right here, uh, and another for integer and line seven even though they use the same class they behave like if they were customized for those types and that's exactly the magic of generics and we don't need to cast anything at all gets that you see here or here this gets for a string box and this gets for int box objects returns the correct type automatically so let's get back to this box um, j dot java file so here we were like, let's say we want a class that can hold any kind of data. We could use object for sure, yeah. But then we'd have to cast it every time, okay? Just like before generics. Instead, we make this class generate by using this uh, type parameter t, this uh, angle bracket t right after this class name, which means this class takes a type parameter t, it's like saying this class is a blueprint, okay? So you decide the type uh, later. And the T can be anything, a string, an integer, even a custom class like user. And by using T consistently in set and get methods, this class guarantees type safety. So you might ask me what happens to generics at runtime. Uh, this is where it gets technical. So Java uses a uh, something called type erasure uh, that means generic types are only checked at compile time after the code is compiled the the, the type parameter t the t between the angle brackets are erased and replaced what with object under the hood so yes 
at runtime, the type info is gone, but you still benefit from compile time safety. That's why you can't use instance of uh, with generic types or create arrays like uh, new T with size 10, for example. So to wrap things up, generics in Java might look strange at first with all those angle brackets and letters like T, uh, angle bracket T, but they solve a real problem. Trust me, they solve a real, real problem. Before generics, we had to cast objects manually, which was messy and dangerous. Uh, we saw how to use generic classes, how to write generic uh, methods. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And if you still have questions, drop them in the comment section. I answer everything.